Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here, and today what we're going to be doing is going through how to set up a simple extract and load pipeline with data quality checks incorporated it in, within it using BigQuery and Great Expectations. So I've done one on Snowflake, done one on Redshift, now it's time for BigQuery. Um, so some quick housekeeping stuff to kind of get set up to follow this tutorial. Um, set your GCP project ID within the Airflow UI or as an environment variable um, so that we can call on that during the actual DAG. Um, make sure you have access to a BigQuery and that role can create, modify, and delete uh, data sets and tables. Um, and then you have some simple kind of prereqs for the data you're actually using. Um, in this case, we're kind of using dummy data, so don't worry too much about these. They're not super important. What's important is the general process and the flow that we're gonna institute here to actually bring in data quality checks on some sample data. Um, so these are just kind of prereqs, but don't worry too much about them. Um, mainly focus on kind of operationally how this is set up. Um, so let's start getting importing all of our packages to get started. So first thing we're going to be doing, as we're going to be doing with all of our DAGs, is importing these packages. So standard up here, date, time, OS, import pathlib so we can define pathways um, in kind of a file type format. Import the Airflow DAG, um, obviously. Import chain so we can do some more complex grouping and our bit mapping for the actual DAG. Um, and then here are the important things. So within BigQuery, you're going to want to import the create dataset operator, create empty table operator, and delete dataset operator. So we have all the operations we need to actually manage that BigQuery table. Um, you're also going to want to use the GCS to BigQuery operator just so we can easily transfer things from a GCS bucket into BigQuery. Um, you know, if you're not using GCS, you can substitute this with the other transfer operator of your choice. Um, and you're also going to use this local file system GCS operator to make it easier for us to take this local file and bring it into GCS. But in production, probably not going to be doing a lot of local file transferring. So again, think of this as more just like an example and you'll probably replace it, you know, where, wherever you're pulling data from, whether it be from an API to bringing it into GCS. Um, and then finally, for data quality checks, we're going to use the great expectations operator down here. Um, so now that we got all of our operators set up, let's start writing our DAG. So to get started here, just some housekeeping items. Um, so setting the path that we're going to use to actually access our local system um, and pull the CSV file. So this is assuming you're using the CSV file provided, um, but you won't really need this if you're not um, using a local CSV file. And then also setting a root directory that will route us to great expectations um, so that we have the ability to connect to our great expectations. Then after we've got those local file pathing and our great expectations directory set up, um, what we're going to want to do is set our BigQuery dataset um, as well as the GCS bucket information just so we can access those as variables instead of needing to hard code it every time we actually use it within the DAG. Because as we all know, that's pretty bad practices, not best practices. And so got all of the stage set, so let's start actually getting into the DAG. Sorry for teasing you. So within the DAG definition, nothing really out of the ordinary needs to be called out here. Just set a description, markdown, schedule interval, start date, and set catch up to false because we don't need this to catch up. Um, but nothing really else needed um, within your default arguments. So now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the fun stuff. Um, so first, we're going to create an empty data set to actually store um, the data that we're about to input within BigQuery. Um, so you, know, you might already have a data set location, but just for the purposes of this, create a data set to get started with. And then after we've created that data set, um, which, you know, not really that important, but just useful, um, we have now the uploading taxi data to GCS. So this is taking that taxi data that I talked about um, that's going to be stored on our local file system. So with this, we're using that local file system to GCS operator, um, defining it as an upload taxi data. SRC, this is calling that route that we already set. So data file, this is going through my local uh, operating system and bringing this uh, CSV file out. Destination is that GCP bucket or GCP def destination that we defined earlier, as well as the bucket um, ID. So this is just basically taking that local data, dropping it in GCS. So now that we've got our CSV waiting in GCS, let's create a BigQuery table um, that'll be able to store the data in and then run great expectations on. Um, so here we're creating a temp table using the create empty table operator. Using the data set ID, again, as that data set ID that we predefined earlier, so we can use it as a variable. Um, and then table ID, you'll notice we are using a Jinja template to take that variable, set it as the table ID, but also adding this temp declaration so we know it's not the 
full official table. This is more of a staging table for us to do data quality operations in before it goes into the actual storage table. Sorry, the data dog is barking in the background, so one sec. So within this table, all we're doing is setting a bunch of schema fields for all the schemas that are gonna be present within that CSV file that we created. Um, so this is gonna be way different from whatever you're using, but this is just kind of an example of what kind of schema fields you'll need to set to actually be able to line it up with your CSV. So make sure you get all of your fields within there from your, for your column level names. So now that we've got all of our data within GCS, you've got a table to put it in within BigQuery. Let's move that data from GCS and bring it into BigQuery, where then we can run our great expectations test suite. Um, so here, using that GCS to BigQuery transfer operator, setting the task ID is the same, bucket, GCP bucket, so it just knows to bring it from that uh, GCP bucket, source objects, again, using that variable that we defined earlier, that is the destination of where that data is being stored. Um, skip the leading rows so it knows that the first rows are going to be columns. Uh, destination project data set table is, again, using those prior formats, uh, so the variables for our BigQuery data set and our BigQuery table to format it um, as this destination project data table. Setting all those schema fields again so we know what we're transferring over. Um, and then defining the source format as CSV. So if you're, if you're using a different source format, change it to that. Create deposition, so creating any kind of depositions that are needed for this data set. Um, and then for write definition, we are <coughs> writing it as truncated, so eliminating any kind of uh, empty space there within the data set as we're transferring it. Um, and then also allowing jagged rows. So this data set isn't perfect. Maybe there's some missing rows. Jagged rows will just allow that to occur. So it's not just saying, hey, if there's not a row or piece of data within one row and there isn't an X, don't cut off that piece of data. It is expected to be there. Um, so now we've got our data within BigQuery. So let's start running great expectations on it. So now, We've got everything in place. Let's do some grid expectations testing. So here we're using the grid expectations operator um, to take our grid expectations uh, data context. So this is going to be basically pulling from that local file system using that variable we predefined um, to so it can understand the context of exactly how the data was presented and give it grid expectations a format to work with. Um, and then we're using the connection ID to connect grid expectations to BigQuery so we can operate on that BigQuery data set using the expectation suite name of taxi.demo. And so this is where it's definitely gonna be different for you where you might be using a different suite of grid expectations data quality checks. Um, and this is where you would define that so it knows which suite of expectations checks to run. Um, finally, your data asset name. This is just setting a name for that we already defined via that variable for that BigQuery, so it knows just you know what data asset are we actually running these operations on. Um, and then you have this option to fail task on validation failure. So saying, hey, if this doesn't pass those data quality checks, do you want to fail the task or not? Um, in most cases, you're not going to want to fail the task because if a data quality check passes negative, you want that operation complete. And so you have the full information of, hey, why did it fail? Rather than just killing the task right there, um, kind of gives you a view that, hey, what went wrong here when really nothing went wrong. The data quality checks just performed as expected um, and they didn't check pass because your data sucks, sorry. Um, and so now that we've done our data quality checks, let's do some housekeeping to clean up our environment after. So now that we've done our all our testing, let's delete that data set. Um, so with this, just using those variables we predefined earlier, um, project ID, using that GCP project ID, uh, data set ID, again, just using the BigQuery data set variable that we defined earlier and setting delete contents to true uh, to make sure that all, not only the table, but all of the included contents are deleted from BigQuery. Um, so we don't have that all gummed up next time someone wants to run some great expectations quality checks. Then finally, we will put it all together with some great creative use of the chain operation. So instead of setting all of our bit mapping with you know, just little arrows, and just toss it all in a pair of parentheses, add chain on it, and it will just move them through with them incrementally in the order that they are put in this list. Um, so just really easy way to avoid having to just type out all the little arrows uh, constantly. Um, so that's all the code we have here. Next, let's look at the graph and then I'll wrap up. So here within the graph, you get kind of a visual representation and this is gonna be a quick one because it's literally just straight linear. Um, so here we got beginning, creating the data set, uploading that taxi data, moving that taxi data from our GCS intermediary storage location to BigQuery, running our great expectations validation checks, um, and then finally deleting that data set and ending with a good old dummy operator. Um, so 
third one in the series of how to do data quality checks on your particular database. Uh, this time for BigQuery. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them um, and hope you learned something. If you did, would love a subscribe, but uh, don't feel pressured at all. Have a good one. Bye.